Well, hello, folks out there on YouTube. I ain't got a big show lined up for you. Let's get right on into it. All right, folks, yeah, the press is definitely going after Coach Prime. Dion had a, a bad day in front of the press the other day, and it seems to really be going uh, backwards there in Colorado as far as his relationship with the press. Also, uh, Brew McCoy, I think he's back. People keep asking if I'm back, and I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he seems to be back. We're going to cover that here in a minute. But first, let's get into this Deion Sanders uh, news. Now, I covered this the other day, and I asked the question, is the honeymoon over? It's definitely over. He has been going back and forth with the press. They're starting to really take the gloves off. And it's, it's probably going to get ugly fairly quickly unless he starts winning right off the bat. Now, if he'll get off to a good start, they'll have to take the uh, approach of being you know, a little bit more kind to him. But after the press conference that he had the other day, I just don't see it. You know, there's just too much animosity between the press and Deion Sanders. And Deion's not going to take it. If you've noticed anything about him over the last many, many years, he's not going to take a bunch of uh, loaded questions or uh, gotcha questions. I mean, none of it. And he's not going to be questioned about the program, the culture, or anything along those lines. If they do that, he's either not going to answer their question or he's going to come right back at them. And I showed you this uh, the other day. Coach Sean Keeler, the Denver Post. Happy summer, my man. You, you don't like us, man. Why do you do this to yourself? Come on. You don't no, like us. Mark you, likes you, me, by the way. Huh? Yeah, yeah. It, Mark, Mark said he likes me. No, so but that's you, one. you don't. Why do you that's do one. this, though? No, no, I'm sorry. Two-parter if I could. No, I'm serious. Football why question. do you do this? Like, you know you don't. Like, why do you do no, this? No, no, no. It's not about that. Football question. Football no, no. question. Why do you do this? Like, it would be hard for me to really engage in someone I don't like or something I don't like. I'm just asking why. Like, why? I've got to pay what bills. What did I do? Of... You didn't do anything. No, I'm serious. Because <laughs> I want to help. Like, because, no, I'm serious. I want to help. Because it's not normal. We can talk about that. We can talk about that. Okay. Can I ask you a football question? No. Seriously. No, we'll talk about that. When we talk about that, I'll talk about that with you. Yeah, yeah. He's not interested in uh, working with some of those folks in the press. And here's the reality. They have a job to do. They've got to ask tough questions, even if you're the head coach and you don't like it. They've got to cover what people want to know. And a lot of people want to know the negative stuff along with the positive stuff. You can't just ask the easy questions. And here's some folks in the press that are tired of it. And this is a story It says, Deion Sanders torched by Denver reporter for media treatment. There See, you the, go. Prob the problem with, uh, with covering Prime is most of the media that covers Prime, and I'm not trying to offend anybody here, and if I do, I don't give a Most of the media that covers Prime kisses his ass and, right. and yeah. basically bends over backwards and will never say anything to uh, fall in disfavor, which is fine because we've all been – We've all been subject to that before. Mm -hmm. um, I'm raising my hand. I've I've done interviews where I've kissed ass because this is where we are. This is what you do. But it's the truth, and the truth hurts. And if those who do kiss ass acknowledge that they don't, then they're lying. So you have a faction of people that kiss ass and never say or write or do anything negative. And then anytime somebody says or writes or says or does anything the least bit uh, critical or controversial, mm -hmm. He makes the leap that they're attacking him. Right. Wouldn't that make sense? Uh, absolutely. Wouldn't that be the easy out? Wouldn't that be the easy way to solve something? Instead, instead, he does the opposite. Everybody's outside, and the only people we let in are the kiss asses. That's it. Yep. That's it. That's you it. kiss our ass, we'll let you in. That's Nobody it. else is allowed in. That's CU right now. CU yep. football right now. 100%. <laughs> it's cool there. You I went to school radio there. there. Your kids went I, to school there. My kid went to school there. My brothers went to school there. My best friends went to school there. I love CU football. I grew up with CU football. I want CU football to succeed. I went to four games last year. I love it. I love everything about it. This is pissing me off. Yep. And and, and for me. And, and let me tell you something else. Let me tell you yep. something else, D-Mac. Sure. There's a lot that I know that I have not released yet. Okay. There's, a, there's a lot that I know from people close to this program that I haven't talked about. I don't just go on the air and just go crazy. I know some things, okay? I know some things that are not going to be said into this microphone. So there's that. Okay, yeah. Those are Colorado guys that have been uh, around that football team for a very long time. Now, I do want to say one thing in favor of Deion Sanders here. Look, when he showed up there, 
that was a dumpster fire. One and 11, okay? They couldn't sell a ticket. They couldn't sell a jersey. Nobody was donating money. Nobody gave a crap, honestly, because they were that bad. He comes in. He actually won the first three games. You can't get a ticket to the game. They're sold out. They're sold out for 2024. They're uh, season tickets. They're making money. They're getting donations. People are buying their jerseys like crazy. He has been a huge help to Colorado when, as far as getting attention. There's been games on TV they wouldn't have gotten, and so on and so forth. And he's only been there one year. And when you come in like he did, like a bull in a china shop, you're going to break a lot of dishes. That's all it boils down to. And people that have been there don't like their dishes broken. They don't. And um, you could say understandably so. But here's the thing. When you sit there and rip into the press like that, back and forth, and don't answer their questions and don't treat them with, you know, it's going to get ugly. You've got to accept as a head coach that you're going to get questions you don't like. There's going to be reports you don't like. You have every right to refute them, but when you just disconnect from the press, that especially the ones that ask you questions you don't like, that's not going to work out long term. It's just not. You can't look like they said in the old days. They buy their ink by the barrel. Now, granted, we don't use ink anymore, but you get the point. They, uh, they write and talk for a living. You're going to have to work with them on some level, unless you just win every ball game. If you're going to go out there and be undefeated, you can say whatever you want. You can be Nick Saban. Other than, and even Nick knew better <laughs> than to totally square off all the time. But anyway, Dion, you know, we'll see. He has a history. He gets mad at a reporter, and he doesn't let it go. And I showed you this the other day. Four tubs of ice water. McCarver was furious. So was CBS Sports. Rick Gentile there. Uh, producer complained to National League President Bill White last night. McCarver wants a meeting with White as soon as he can get one. And after this confrontation, Tim McCarver confronted Sanders. McCarver's right here. Right now. Hey, you I are got a real you. man. You know that? Oh, this, you are a real man, Dion. I'll say that. Yeah, I mean, he'll throw water on you. He doesn't care. Now, granted, he was young back then, but it hadn't changed much. So anyway, we'll see how this goes, but it sounds like things could get very caustic over there very quickly. Anyway, the honeymoon's over. It's over as far as that goes. He needs to win, and he might very well. We'll see. Now we're going to talk about Brew McCoy, and he appears to be back. Here you'll see him going full blast. Irk takes the big stop and goes forward. Yeah, that ankle's looking really, really good for him. So that's, that's obviously a good start. All right, now let's watch him uh, running down the line here. We'll see how he does. Yeah. yeah. he's I mean, he's moving. What a big target, too. 200 and about, what, 30 pounds? It's like a linebacker out there. And on Rocky Top Insider by Rick Butler, he says, Vols uh, wide receiver Brew McCoy, he's out of his non-contact jersey after eight practices. First time this fall we had seen McCoy out of the red non-contact uh, jersey. And the wide receivers, uh, coach said, for him, it's just giving him the big picture. Our plan for him is kind of our workload plan for him, not getting back in there too soon, putting a bunch of volume on him. Said he's done a good job of trusting uh, that he's done an amazing job of leading his room. Says for Brew, you can just tell walking onto the field today at practice, it was a big day for him. And you can understand that that was a brutal injury. It was one of the worst I've ever seen. And to see him this quickly within a year and possibly be ready to go full bore in the first game, that's tremendous. I didn't know if he would ever be able to uh, get to that station in life again as far as an athlete. He's there, it appears to me. And Brew is a very important part of our wide receiver group. First of all, he's got asbestos hands. He was the one guy when, when uh, Joe Milton threw it as hard as he could, he could handle it. He's also a tremendous downfield blocker, not only for our wide receivers, but also our running backs. A lot of times our running backs would get into the secondary. McCoy was one of the key blockers because he's 225 pounds and fast as lightning, and he can block like you can't believe. He's basically a linebacker out there playing uh, the slot. So we're going to have that going for us again, which is huge for both running and uh, receiving. And also, uh, we've been hearing a lot about Chris Brazell. He was a big-time transfer uh, player that UT was pretty excited about, and they're very excited about him now. In practice, he's been doing some amazing things. Uh, here's a play that will show you how difficult it is to deal with him down in the uh, end zone. 
You can see right here, zoop. I mean, that's, I don't know how you defend that. What do you do? Jeez. Yeah, that, that would be hard to stop. So he's doing that a lot in practice, and it appears to me he's going to be a starter for us pretty easily. And we may be looking to, to him to have a big year. All right, folks, less than three weeks to go. I know everybody's getting excited. It's not that far off. We'll be playing that first ball game. And there's also those week zero games, which will be kind of interesting. Uh, that's less than two weeks away. So anyway, just wanted to cover some of these uh, most recent stories. If you've not subscribed, hit this little button right here. Boom, boom, boom. Won't cost you a dime, and I'd appreciate it. Help you get my videos. And right over here is the most recent video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. And we'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.